After Effects Beta gets even more new features, Motion Array wants you to win a thousand bucks and a free business development course drops from one of the best to ever do it. It's Motion Mondays. Put that coffee down. Put that coffee down. I'm just kidding. Drink your coffee. At Adobe Max last year, there was a demo of something pretty interesting called Project Concept, and it's now in beta. Think Pinterest meets stock photo site meets AI tool, but actually useful. The app is built for that early concepting phase where you're trying to figure out what the heck your project should look like. You get an infinite canvas where you can mix your own images with Adobe stock assets, and Firefly's there to generate new stuff if you need it. Here's what's cool. You can use AI to remix and combine images to spark new ideas quickly. And since it's Adobe, they've baked in their content credential system, which tells you if something was made with AI or just partially AI assisted. You can generate images with text prompts, mix two images together, and organize every Everything on artboards. The real value here is speed. When you're concepting, you need to see lots of reference images to get those creative neurons firing. This tool could help you uncover ideas a bit faster than doom scrolling Pinterest. Want to try it? You can apply for the beta waitlist now. The link is in the description. Motion Array just dropped. See what I did there? Their drag and drop 2025 challenge, and there's some serious cash up for grabs. They're looking for packs of five animated assets on transparent backgrounds to add to their library. The grand prize winner takes home $1,000, a year of motion array, and gets featured on their marketing channels. There's prizes for second and third place too. They've even given you the inside scoop on what styles are trending with their users, plus specific subcategories that are in high demand. All the rules and specs are on the contest page, and word is some familiar faces might be judging this contest. And while I can't officially be bribed, well, you know. It's a perfect excuse to work on a personal project that could put some extra cash in your pocket while creating assets other artists can use. Check out the contest page for all the details. We've got some very exciting stuff cooking at School of Motion. First up, we just launched our first ever Blender course taught by the incredible Elijah Sheffield. This isn't just another Blender Basics course. It's built specifically for motion designers, focusing on professional workflows you'll actually use. If you're coming from Cinema 4D, Elijah translates those concepts so you can hit the ground running. For teams of three or more, this course is also part of our new team training program. You get access to every School of Motion course, unlimited critique, verified credentials, our 24-7 community, monthly live streams, and more, all with consolidated billing and floating seats. And mark your calendars because this Wednesday we are dropping a special podcast with Territory Studio. They're breaking down three incredible projects complete with a presentation from their team. You get insights into how they grew their studio and some seriously detailed technical breakdowns. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Speaking of Blender, let's talk about two cool plugins that just dropped. First up is Rig Creator from Edward Urenia. It's a name your price rigging tool with some clever features. The standout is this automatic overlapping animation system that adds natural follow through to your movements. It handles everything from basic rigs to facial animation, and there's a handy tutorial to get you started. Then we've got Cairo's free modifier set add-on, which gives Cinema 4D refugees something to smile about. It brings some MoGraph style functionality to Blender, letting you work with cloners and arrays in a more familiar way. Instead of building everything from scratch in geometry nodes, you get tools that feel a little bit more like what C4D artists are used to. Cairo put together a nice walkthrough showing off all the features, and did I mention, it's free. Check them both out if you're diving into Blender. Sonduck Film just dropped a killer tutorial showing how to squeeze some serious juice out of After Effects' newer 3D system. They've got some clever hacks for creating MoGraph-style 3D spheres that look like they came from a dedicated 3D app. The tricks include some sneaky ways to get perfect spheres and lighting techniques that can fake metallic materials. As Adobe keeps beefing up the 3D engine, you'll be able to do more without bouncing between apps, but for now, these workarounds are gold. Check out the tutorial on their channel, and the link is in the description. Meanwhile, Jitter just added an infinite canvas feature to their cloud-based animation tool. You can now have multiple artboards, each with its own timeline, kind of like Rive or Figma. The real-time collaboration means multiple artists can work simultaneously, watching each other's progress. While it's mainly for simpler animations and Lottie exports, it could be perfect if you need something quick and don't want to fire up After Effects. The templates are handy too. It doesn't have nearly the power of Rive, but for certain projects, tools like Jitter can be pretty handy. Let's talk about some incredible work that caught my eye. First up, animator Ian, aka Worthy, created this beer commercial that looks straight out of the Don Bluth era, except it's actually made in 3D. Made in Blender, it perfectly mimics that classic cell animation style. The characters are 3D models with what looks like maybe some grease pencil work for line weights, and the results are just ridiculous. Turn your sound on for this one because it's hilarious. We brew it and it's good and it's delicious and it's made of hops that we collect from the prairies. Lynn Fritz has been crushing it lately with her signature style of mixed keyframe and traditional animation. Her work for MTV shows off her incredible eye for color and composition, and she's even done in-store artwork for Nike. She's also got some process shots up showing her traditional animation approach. 
approach. And do not miss OpenAI's brand refresh video by Studio Dunbar. It's very Apple-esque with crisp typography and smart design systems. The animation is intentionally simple, letting the design do the heavy lifting, proof that sometimes two colors and a few elements are all you need if you nail the fundamentals. All these artists and work will be linked in the description so you can check them out. Here is a quick AI tools roundup. Matt Anyone just dropped, and it's a new rotoscoping tool that's turning heads. There's supposedly a working demo coming this week, but the examples are already pretty wild. It's really good at identifying and propagating super detailed mats across frames, capturing fine details like hair and soft edges. If you squint at the results, sure, you can spot some flaws, but for most work, and maybe even some feature film stuff, this looks plenty good enough. If After Effects Roto Brush worked this well, we'd all be spending a lot less time cursing at our screens. Meanwhile, ByteDance showed off OmniHuman 1, their AI character animation system that turns single images and scripts into talking head videos. This Einstein demo is particularly freaky. Turn the sound off and it looks eerily real. So uh, a famous uh, classical poet said, The lip sync isn't perfect, but their stylized character demos like this talking broccoli suggest we're getting close to usable in-production animations. None of it's 100% believable yet, but it's pretty darn close, and we're definitely watching this space. What do you think about this? Leave a comment below. After Effects must-have tool Overlord just hit version 2.5, and it's packing some handy upgrades. The big one is a new rasterize feature. Select your Illustrator artwork, hit a button, and boom, it's converted to PNG and imported into After Effects. Super useful when you're dealing with dense artwork that would bog down After Effects effects in vector form or when you just don't need all those layers. They've also improved how groups come in as pre-comps, adding automatic cropping so your comps are only as big as they need to be. The Figma connection got some love too with better support for gradient fills and background blur on text layers. If you bought Overlord in the last year, you get this upgrade free. If not, you'll need to pay. But if you're bouncing between Illustrator, Figma, and After Effects, it's worth every penny. After Effects beta is cooking up some nice upgrades. First, there's a new setting to keep your workspace from changing when you open projects. No more fighting to get your layout back after opening someone else's file. As someone who pretty much always uses the same setup, this is a huge time saver. They've also added the ability to use any 2D layer as an environment light, not just HDR files. Even better, you can use video files or even pre-comps for animated lighting. Imagine using an animated gradient to light your scene. There's also a new one-click solution for setting up null objects to control position-based properties. Instead of writing expressions, you can instantly create 2D or 3D nulls to drive effects like lens flares or four-color gradients. Check out those new features in the After Effects beta, available with your Creative Cloud subscription. It's time to shout out the School of Motion student of the week, Portland-based Stephen Funk, currently in our VFX for Motion course through All Access, just knocked it out of the park with the Comic Relief Project. This assignment challenges students to key footage and create that classic angel-devil scenario, compositing them onto footage shot specifically for the course. Steven nailed the tricky keying work. Our talent Kaylee had some frizzy hair that required extra finesse to get right. He added some nice subtle animation touches and pulled off some sweet glowing flame effects for the devil character. There's a lot of moving parts in this piece, from complex keying to compositing to effects work. And Steven handled it all beautifully. Keep crushing it, Steven. We're excited to see what you tackle next. Chris Zwar at Pro Video Coalition just dropped video number 26 in his color management series, bringing the total to a whopping 12 hours of content. If you've ever imported footage into After Effects only to have the colors look completely wrong, this is the resource you need. It's literally everything you could possibly want to know about color management, not just in After Effects, but in general. The latest video tackles the ACES workflow in After Effects. That's the Academy Color Encoding System, designed for standardizing color space between different input sources in production and archiving. After Effects supports it, but there's a bunch of settings that you need to get right, and Chris walks you through all of them. If you work with footage where the colors have to be spot on accurate, this might be the best educational resource on Earth or any other planet. The complete series is a monumental achievement in technical education, so thank you, Chris. Remember Joe Nash, ex-director of business strategy at Buck? After his popular podcast episode with us last year, he just dropped a free course called Learn the Foundations on his Today and Tomorrow platform. This isn't just another business course, it's Joe's complete playbook for landing dream clients and growing your creative business. The course includes over 30 video lessons, printable templates, and about two hours of content covering everything from building awareness to developing relationships and using data to land clients. Joe's been consulting for some of the biggest studios on earth, and he's literally giving away his strategy guide. Whether you're a freelancer or running a studio, this is gold, and it's free. So go sign up now before he changes his mind. Design tools maker Studio AAA just launched Dither Boy, and it's the most control I've ever seen for creating dithered effects. 
There are 20 different dithering algorithms, each giving you a distinct look, plus built-in tools for tweaking contrast that affect how your dithering appears. The amount of control is pretty ridiculous. You can adjust pretty much every setting to dial in exactly the look you're after. Sure, it's a very specialized tool, but with that retro aesthetic making a comeback, the timing couldn't be better. Most tools that handle dithering give you basic controls at best, but Dither Boy lets you get surgical with it. It's not expensive either, so if you're into that pixelated retro vibe, this is worth checking out. Studio AAA site is actually a great resource for designers in general. They've got a bunch of other useful tools worth exploring. And that wraps up this episode of Motion Mondays. Don't forget to check out our new Blender course and keep your eyes peeled for Wednesday's Territory Studios podcast. They're breaking down three incredible projects in excruciating detail while also discussing how tax incentives play a role in their business, global expansion strategies, and some seriously geeky technical breakdowns. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that or any of our other content, and we will see you next week. Thank you.